so today what we're going to cover is how to make a return loop or the end loop on the ice floor of an ice rink. Um, this is probably a niche thing, but the fact is that there is a market for this and for a professional rink installer, this is something you might want to check out here. Now you know there's a lot of different ways to return from your cold header to your warm header at the end of an ice rink. Some people even use a rink and header for it. But what I'd like to show is a way to do that return loop by bending PVC that can save you money on materials and save you a lot of time too. And also just less cement, less fittings, less nonsense in the process. Now, there's already, you, you know about this, there's those prefab ice floors that you can just come out, roll down the soft pipe, hook it to your headers on either end and you're ready to rock. And I think that's cool. I think especially for temporary setups and for portable setups, that's a really awesome way to go. But if you're doing a permanent installation, it's nice to have a flat finish. It's nice to have a perfect finish. And that's what I like to cover right now. Now, the way to do this, you know, you have a lot of options. Different pipe diameters will allow you different spacing between your coolant tubes. And it's true, you know, say if you're running a one inch pipe, you're going to be able to run more coolant down that tube, but your pipes end up being farther away because of the fitting sizes or because of the minimum bend diameter at the very end of the line. So for this particular one, I've chosen 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC because this allows you to space your tubes about 4 inches apart running down the floor. And I like the advantage of a hard PVC as opposed to a soft PVC for permanent installations because the soft pipe has its little wave action going on and honestly the thinner your sheet of ice is the more evenly you're able to cool it the better you're able to distribute those temperatures and I've chosen three quarter inch pipe because then you're able to have your pipes a lot closer together which helps quite a bit um, for a thousand reasons but the biggest one is that because the pipes are closer together you've got a more even coolant flow now an advantage to three quarter inch over a larger diameter is that Larger diameters require more pressure in the headers to make it actually work. They require stronger pumping. And with a smaller diameter, with a lower pressure inside of your header, you're still going to have a great coolant flow running down the floor. So, what I got here, 3 quarter inch, Schedule 40, plain old PVC. This stuff, don't recommend for super high temperature applications, but for low temperature applications, and especially pressure stabilized applications like ice where this can already withstand quite a bit of pressure and then once you've got it jacketed with your ice floor this thing is not going anywhere really good stuff and it lays down flat on whatever surface you're building on which is another cool advantage is just not having that wave action meaning that you can have a th thinner sheet of ice in the long run too so what you do slide it onto the bender And wait, this process does not take long, so you want to stick around. And if you've seen other episodes of this, you've heard that before. But seriously, don't wander too far. And in this case, because we are going to be running a fluid through it, you want to make sure to rotate your pipe inside of the bender pretty often. I'd say maybe even three times a minute. And that sounds a little extreme until you think about it. If you've got an infrared box, you've got to sit there and keep spinning the pipe, keep spinning the pipe, or if you've got a heat gun, you're sitting there doing this action, trying to heat up your bend area. So actually, even though it sounds like a lot, very convenient still. So, I'm gonna screw around here for a few minutes while this thing heats up, and then we'll get back to meaningful things again. So, this thing's just about ready. Before you touch that pipe, now that it's this hot, you can still turn it, that's okay. Before you take it off, man, put your gloves on. That thing will burn you, and it, I burn myself. Hold on. Okay, it all fell off. I was gonna show you burn. It's not cool, it takes days, you don't even know. You're like hanging out, and then three days later, you look and you have 
deep flesh blister on your hand from handling hot pipe. So be careful with that. Now, what I've got here is a form for doing this and making sure that we can duplicate the same piece every time. This has nothing to do with it. This is to crush out kinks if they show up. Now, all it is, we'll stick the pipe in here, curve it around, stick it back there. And that does the job. What's really cool about it is it means, now if you were to run this on a longer board, if you had six feet to go before you needed the loop back and then four feet left on the pipe, what you could do is stick five feet of your pipe on the bender, leave the other five feet rigid because it doesn't really matter for this, and then drop it in and you can put that bend exactly where you need it. You can have the six feet sticking out and then you have your bend and have about four and a half feet, four feet, four inches left on the other side and then you can just keep running back to your header. So very, very, very cool because it just means less waste. It means instead of like running out to the end of the rink and needing a fitting and then cutting off a chunk of pipe and throwing it away, you won't have to do that until you get all the way back to the header and then you might have to throw something out, but the other thing is not really. You just take that piece, use it at the beginning of your next one, and keep running. And so it really eliminates waste, it eliminates fitting costs, and it eliminates cementing time. All very good things in my opinion. So, what we'll do, we'll pull this off the bender. Now before I drop it in this form, this is such a tight bend that what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a piece of three quarter inch metal hose in it first and then I'm going to bend it right away and get it to go as tight as it'll go right now. And what this means is that any stretching that's happening on the walls of the pipe here is going to happen now. It'll avoid kinking on the inside or tearing on the outside and if it's going to tear you'll find out before you get too involved in the process which this kind of pipe is really small diameters are really hard to tear. Honestly, you have to get up into three or four inch pipe to really tear on a bend. Anyway, now that I've got this, I've got my basic bend where I want it, what I'm gonna do is pull this hose out, take this piece and so it's perfect, drop it in the form. And you wanna keep an eye on the apex of your curve as you do this because if you don't keep a little pressure on it, it may try to kink on you and that is very frustrating. So, drop it down and then what I've got this board for is to, there's a little bit of ovaling going on here. It's not kinked, but instead of being that circle, it's kind of turned into an oval in the curve. So by pressing this board down on that, I can return the pipe back to a perfect circle. Then what I'm going to do, Take your gloves off for this. You don't want wet gloves, because say if you're building a large size rink, you might have two dozen of these bends, three dozens of these bends on there, and you really don't want wet gloves because that water transmits the heat right through your glove and to your skin. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet it down. This speeds up the cooling process quite a bit. And it's not, you know, you don't have to, you can let it naturally cool, especially if this is a screwed down form. So if I wanted, I could just leave it alone and get back to it, start down at the header and just start running my next run. But I'm an impatient person and when I start something, I like it done quick. So anyway, the basic shape is here. What I'm going to do is cool it down one more time. You know, I was able to cool off the body of the pipe, but now I want that apex of that curve to cool just as quickly as the rest of it. So, first I'll show it like this to show a little something about forming. Since I did this for demonstration purposes and not for actual use, I left my form a little sloppy here and you see how the pipe's kind of bent there. And you have a couple options. As you're doing your bend, you can either hold it down to keep this from bending like that or just make a better form. You know, make sure these channels are right and then you're able to just basically click it down, press out the oval and you're ready to boogie, cool that stuff off. If you have a big enough form and sort of an adjustable thing, back to the waste elimination thing, then 
you're able, if you need six feet, four feet, or three feet, seven feet, whatever the combination is, you can have your pipe in here and do that. And that means less cutoffs, less fittings. So it's less time wasted, less material wasted, and less money wasted on somebody's part. Even if you're passing the cost on to the client, it's nice to know that if you've got a, w a lower waste process, then you're able to bid lower. If you've got a less fitting involved process, you're able to bid lower. And if you know that you're also providing a superior finish, I mean, if you can come in with a lower bid and a better finish guaranteed, awesome, you're gonna get more business too. So anyway, here we have that return loop. And again, this is from sloppy forming. If I had taken a little more time to do this, like if you're in the business, you know you will, that's a perfect end loop. That is a perfect return. That means that I can run the cold out and then run this side back to the hot header to go back in to the chiller. And absolutely cool system, you know. And again, for temporary or portable setups, this may not be the way to go, but if you know you're doing permanent installations, this is a great way to cut your material costs, a great way to cut waste of time, headaches, a great way to cut some of the toxic chemicals in the process out. And there you have it. So I think this is about all I can say about this.